Hi there, it's Mumin and welcome to the channel. For the past three years, I've been learning and using Unity to develop games as a side hustle. During this time, I've created over 20 game prototypes and learned a lot about game development. You know, just trying to materialize my game ideas into reality. Now I want to share my workflow with the YouTube community to help other game developers. So let's get started and make some awesome games together. But first, I want to show you the end result of this prototype. So let's start with the ideation phase, where all the magic happens. For my game, I started with a basic word game, you know, the kind you select hidden words and letters to explode. But let's be real, that's about as exciting as watching a paint dry. So I decided to kick it up a notch. After a brainstorming session that involved way too much coffee, I came up with the idea of merging my word game with a digging mechanic. I mean, who doesn't love digging? But I didn't want it to be too complicated, so I kept the rules sim simple and easy to understand. Of course, I knew I wanted this game to be played on mobile devices. So I whipped out good old PowerPoint and started drawing some cubes to represent the grounds. So see, here are the rules. After each cube explodes, the shovel UI on the upper right side of the screen drops down with one point. If you select hidden words, the length of the hidden words is loaded into shovel points. And if you run out of the shovel points before reaching the star, well, that's game over, my friend. But enough talk, let me show you what I'm talking about. Here is a quick look at the visual I'm targeting for. So grab your shovel and let's get digging. So here is what I did to make the base game. First, I used a bunch of cubes to represent the grid section of the game. Then I just started slapping letters on top of each other. Easy, right? Now I know what you are thinking. Why, he, why didn't he use a 2D grid? Well, I wanted to make this prototype quick and dirty, so I used 3D cubes with bevel on each side. And yeah, I know it's not the most elegant solution, but it gets the job done. I also added canvas and text mesh pro over each cube to show the letters over them and just to make it more complicated. I also added canvas to the text mesh pro over each cube to show the letters over them. And just to make it more complicated, I threw in a hand animation to point, point at things. And just to make things even easier, I used assets from Unity Asset Store. You know, because why make things from scratch when you can just download them? Now, in the game itself, we've got the Lean Touch Swipe Manager script, which collects the selected object lists. And in Game Manager, I collect the list and then run the logic for exploding particles and disabling game objects. Easy, right? So, that's the base game. Now, let's talk about the unsung heroes of this game. The assets I used. First up, we have Datwin Pro, the king of all the assets. This bad boy can twin anything you want without any trouble. It's like fairy godmother of Unity assets. Next, we have Lean Touch Plus. This asset is a lifesaver when it comes to tracking selected objects in your game. It's like the trustworthy sidekick that always has your back. I mean, what's a hero without their trusty sidekick? Am I right? And of course, we can't forget the Epic FX. This asset has a plethora of particle system prefabs that make your game look polished in no time. It's like the makeup artist that can make anyone look like a movie star. For the shovel, I used the Low Poly Ultimate Pack. It's basically one stop for shop for all things low poly. I mean, who has time to search for a shovel on the internet anyway? So, for in editor section, I decided to use Odin Inspector, but let me tell you, this asset is like a giant encyclopedia. It has so many features and settings that I feel like I will never be able to master them all. I'm still learning how to use it, but sometimes I feel like I'm stuck in a never-ending tutorial. And last but not the least, we have Mixamo. This site is like gift from the animation gods. You can upload your character and download it with an animation already added to it. It's like having a personal animator on speed dial. So there you have it folks, the assets that made the game possible. Links to all of them will be in the description so you can check them for yourself. Oh, the cube behavior, where all the cube stuff happens. So I started by adding a stickman character with a shovel, because who doesn't love a stickman with a shovel, right? Now, since I no longer needed gravity for the cubes, I turned off all the gravity options and let me tell you, watching cubes float around space is pretty trippy. But it's all for the sake of game development, right? At first, I tried to make the reachable cubes by defining them inside the player script, 
but it quickly turned into a tangled of mess of ifs and else's and let's just say it was not pretty. So I had to come up with a better way. And that's when I got the idea to work with the swipe manager script. After each cube selection, the script looks for adjacent cubes in four directions of the selected cube. And let me tell you, watching those cubes light up like a Christmas tree is pretty satisfying. But I didn't stop there. I added a lean mesh renderer script to make the adjacent cubes change color, just to make it even more visually pleasing. And at the start of the level, the script only sets the ground cubes as selectable. After the selection, it orders the player to run over the first cube, and because let's be real, we need some direction in our lives. And then the explosions began. After each explosion, I added another raycast option over the player. If the previous and current raycasts are not the same, the script darkens the color of the previous raycast cube. But wait, there is more. I wanted the option to not disable previous cubes on the same level. I mean, why not give players a choice? So I added a script to do just that. And let me tell you, watching those cubes with lines through them is pretty satisfying. And that's it, folks. That's the cube behavior. The stickman character. Where all the sticky things happen. So, in order to illustrate the digging mechanics inside the game, I needed to choose a digging device. And what's better than a stickman with a shovel? I mean, who doesn't love a stickman with a shovel, right? I chose the animations from good old Mixamo. I used digging and running animations with an animator and then I edited the digging animation a little to make it feel better inside the game. And let me tell you, watching that stickman dig is a thing of beauty. Now, for the movement part, I have two main options, but since I wanted this prototype to be cheap and fast, I went with that bean animation. I used that bean animations for both vertical and horizontal movement of the stickman. And let me tell you, watching that stickman move is a thing of even greater beauty. And in the player script, I added horizontal and vertical checkers that the player continuously raycasts in up, down, left and right directions. Because let's be real, we need some direction in our lives, right? And if the player proceeds, the script disables lean selectables in previous list. And speaking of direction, the player script also collects letter information in order to compare them with the target words. I mean, we can't have a game without words, right? And after each cube explosion, the script collects the string value and compares it with the target list. And if there is a hit, the hit words list checks and updates the shovel GUI. Because what's a shovel without a GUI? But let's not forget the most important part of any game, particle effects. I added giblet explosion particle effects inside the player script. After each cube explosion, a new particle is instantiated over the cube, which creates a bit more juiciness in the game. And for the giblet explosion, I searched through the epic effects and got the first one I found. Because, let's be real, who has time to search for perfect particle effect? And one more thing, I didn't want the cubes above the player set to be selectable. So I just added a simple box collider with a is trigger turned on above the stickman's head. If any collider touches it, the colliders on the cubes get disabled. It's not exactly the best way to solve, but if it works, it works. And that's the stickman character. I mean, who knew a stickman with a shovel could be so complex? Now, if you'll excuse me, I'm going to go watch that stickman dig some more. All right, it's time to talk about the UI. That's right, the user interface. It's the thing you stare at while you play the game. And it's got to look good, right? So, I took a screenshot of a shower. Don't ask me why. And it just seemed like a good idea at that time. I removed the backgrounds and voila, you got the instant shovel icon. No need to waste time searching for a fancy logo or anything like that. Then I arranged the shovel icon on the canvas and added the text fields to display the shovel count and split the capacity and current count with good old forward slash. It's simple, but it gets better. I integrated this UI section into the player script. I know it's not the best practice, but hey, if it works, it works. Now I've got methods to update the shovel count and check if the level is completed or failed based on the count. But here's where it gets really fancy. I added a gradient for, from green to red to the text field and the color changes based on the shovel count. I mean, who needs boring old static text when you can have a color changing gradient rainbow of shovel goodness? And just when you thought it, it couldn't get any better, I added a Tatwin animation to really make that text field pop. You know what they say, if you're gonna go do something, do it with style. So there you have it, the UI script in all its glory. Now if you'll excuse me, I've got some level and animations to add. Alright, it's time to add some pizzazz to this game with some level and animations. I wanted to give the game two endings, a positive one for level completion and a negative one for failure. For level completion, 
I added a star at the bottom of the cubes, what the player needs to reach. Once they get there, it's time for confetti rain and explosions. I got these effects from the epic effects, and I have to say they are epic indeed. To cap it off, I added the next level button because who doesn't love progress? But wait, there is more. For level failure, I added an if statement to the player script that checks if the current shovel value goes below or equals zero. If that happens, the game announces the level has ended negatively and I display a fail image with a restart button. Because what's a game without some good old failure, right? I know there are some pesky bugs in the game where the player keeps selecting upwards direction if they don't remove their finger, but hey, this is a prototype and I want it to be quick and dirty. So for now, I'm turning a blind eye on them. Next up, level design. I'm thinking of starting with 9 shovel points and there will be multiple paths for the players to take. As the levels progress, I will decrease the shovel counts and paths, making it harder to finish the level. And finally, since most mobile devices have a 916 or 995 aspect ratio, I need to change the grid size from 77 to 711, because what's the point of having a game if it doesn't fit on your screen, right? All right. Time for some more polish. I realized that the game wasn't highlighting the correct parts of selected words, and that just wouldn't do. I mean, how are players supposed to feel like geniuses or if they can't even see the what letters they got right? So I added some code to make the selected cubes turn blue instead of yellows. But of course that didn't work right away because programming never does. I swear it's like my code has mind off its own. After some more tinkering and yelling at my computer, I finally got it working, and you know what? I was feeling so good about it, and I decided to add another feature. Turning wrong cubes letters to red. Now player can feel even worse when they mess up. <laughs> Just kidding, it's all fun. Anyway, after a few rounds of polish, I'm feeling pretty confident about the game's look and feel. Time to move on to level design. So now that most of the hard work is done, it's time to get to the fun part. The level design. I mean, what's a game without levels? Especially if you want to release it on the Android store. Those mobile games can be pretty demanding. Anyway, I decided to go with 20 levels because, you know, since I want them to feel like they are making progress, I started with an easy peasy 3 to 4 grid in the first level. And I mean, we don't want to scare them. Then things get progressively harder. Like trying to get out of bed on a Monday morning. By the time we get to level 20, the grid is gonna be a whopping 7 by 11. That's big, that's like, that's really big. And because I like details, I divided the levels into four chapters. Food, fashion, beauty and travel. Each chapter has its own sets, three to five letter words. Because, let's face it, nobody wants to spell out super califiscalation expeditions on their phone. Now, when it comes to generating levels, I realized that manual adding and removing letters on each cube would take me longer than trying to solve a Rubik's cube blindfolded. So I had to come up with a better solution. And that's when I discovered the power of editor scripts. With a few clicks and a button with the help of Odin Inspector, I was able to make a quick work of those levels. Sure, it still took some time, but at least I didn't have to sacrifice my entire weekend to make it happen. So let's check what the final product videos look like. Thanks for watching till here. If you enjoyed this video, please consider subscribing to my channel for the contents you like this. You can also support me on Patreon, link in the description. If you are interested in using any of these assets I used for this game, you can find the links in the comments below. Don't hesitate to leave a comment if you have any questions or feedback. Thanks for watching and I will see you in the next one.